you may already know, I'm going to be uh, leading the Bernie Sanders celebrity roast. <laughs> Bernie Sanders embodies the spirit of the 60s hippie movement. He hates billionaires and shaved bush. <laughs> Ironically, Bernie Sanders is himself in the 1%. Not just in income, but in prostate size. <laughs> Bernie Sanders should not worry about the coronavirus. After all, he survived the 1918 Spanish flu <laughs> epidemic. So he can survive this. Are you guys germaphobes lately? Um, like, you know those long door handles? Uh, I don't touch the middle anymore. I touch way up top. <laughs> but now every time I walk into a restaurant, it looks like I'm a stripper who's starting her dance. <laughs> I don't just enter, I create an experience. Every sport has been canceled, so men have to just live with themselves. Like, I called my friend up. I was like, what, what you been up to, man? He's like, I'm just, I'm just uh, working on me, man. You know, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, that's, that's great, man. He's like, I realize I got a lot of daddy issues, a lot of, a lot of jealousy in my life. Just pause for another second. He's like, I just want to tell you, I, I love you, man. I love I don't say it enough. And I was like, man, this is a great virus. This is a good virus. We all need this. You know, you've had a dating profile for too long when you start noticing people's personal growth. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're swiping through like, oh, cool. Freddie 420 went to grad school after all. <laughs> so back on the dating apps, I've noticed this trend on dating apps under education, a lot of girls will put Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry as their education. <laughs> Just say you got a GED. What the fuck are we doing, man? <laughs> Why are we out here lying? <laughs> There's another quote I see a lot that women love to use, and it's a quote by Marilyn Monroe. You probably know it. It is, uh, Marilyn says, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Solid quote. But let's just recognize that Marilyn Monroe, at her worst, is dead of a drug overdose, so... <laughs> we could probably do a little better than that. <laughs> Find a better quote than that. I went on a date with a girl from Bumble, and after the date, I knew we wouldn't meet up again, but I wanted to be nice about it, so I wrote her a message, and I was like, hey, thanks so much for meeting up, you know, have a good one. And she wrote back, yes, very enjoyable meeting you as well. Good luck on all your future endeavors. <laughs> And I was like, did I just get fired from a date? <laughs> Is there an HR department I can talk to? You guys into sexting? I'm not, I'm not very good at it. And I'll tell you this, autocorrect will never help you sext at all. Autocorrect's like Mormon or something. I don't know what's going on with it. You'll try to write something sweet to a lady, you know? You'll try to write something like, uh, hey, do you want to sit on my face? I'll guess your weight. You know, something romantic. <laughs> And autocorrect will be like, did you mean to ask, do you want to bask in the glory of Christ's light? And you're like, what? <laughs> no. I want to wear this lady like a gas mask. <laughs> and autocorrect's like, Corinthians 315. <laughs> you didn't need to send a hyperlink, autocorrect. So uh, the father of my best friend, he told me he has seen a UFO. And I really want to believe him but he looks like he has seen a UFO. <laughs> uh, I noticed that people who see UFOs, they often have long hair. <laughs> it's never a guy in like a suit with a tie <laughs> with really short hair. He is so career motivated, so he doesn't have time to look at the sky. <laughs> It's like I noticed that lesbians uh, sometimes keep their hair short. <laughs> and you might disagree with that observation, but I never met a lesbian who's seen a UFO. <laughs> uh, uh. I Googled my high school arch nemesis the other day. <laughs> we all do it. You Google people you used to hate to see if their lives suck now, right? 
Google my high school arch nemesis, and the first result was a mugshot, and it made my day. It made me very happy. <laughs> I was just hoping she was fat now, too, but prison, like, wow. <laughs> Beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I'm petty and I'm filled with hate. I hold grudges forever. And when you're a grudge holder, people will tell you, you got to release that negative energy. You don't want to be carrying around that negative energy. Uh, I do. It brings me joy. Um, <laughs> Like, if I thought I could earn a living holding grudges, I would quit comedy, I would run out off of space and open up my own little grudgery. I would just sit in there every day from nine to five. I would hold them. I probably wouldn't even take lunch breaks because the hate would fill me up on the inside. I would take over other people's grudges. That's how much I enjoy it. Like, just come into my grudgery, give me some money, and tell me the backstory. You know what I'm saying? Just have a seat. Now, what did this bitch do to us? Like, you know? Both my parents are actually immigrants. They're from the Dominican Republic. They were both born in the Dominican Republic. So uh, technically, I'm, uh, I'm Hispanic, but nobody ever believes me. <laughs> if you're looking for it, though, the politically correct term for me is actually Afro-Latino. And if you never heard of that, basically, we're like the next big thing. <laughs> <laughs> they compare us to Bitcoin in 2011. <laughs> it's like, invest now, because the stock is going up, you know? <laughs> People didn't even know we were real. We kind of just popped up one day. <laughs> we're like unicorns. <laughs> we could do it all, triple threat. We could dance salsa, speak Spanish, and say the N-word. 